into back to whatever the table value is. So if I had negative 20 here, it could go down to negative 10 degrees, but it can vary between 10 to negative 10. So it's going to give it a window that it can alter the spark timing in, again, to keep it under this 10 PSI uh, range. We also see this alt fuel trim. This is going to add additional fuel when it's on the anti-lag, and this is going to be very important as well because if we're on the anti-lag, it's going to be building a lot of heat, and we need to make sure that we have adequate fuel in order for this to function correctly. So this alt fuel trim, we might want to have it uh, be 10 or maybe 15%, and really what we want to do is watch our wideband when we're using this anti-lag feature. If we see that our wideband starts to lean out, we'd have to go in here and we would have to uh, add some additional fuel. So we might be at 20% or 25%. Ultimately, you're just going to be adding as much trim in here to get back to between 11 to 12 to 1 air fuel when you're on the anti-lag function. So what we're going to do here after we've set up all these conditions, we're going to go in and we're actually going to set this alt function input. And we're going to set it from a switch is always off to a switch is always on. So now if we go up and we meet the conditions here, it's going to kick into the alt uh, the alt feature or the anti-lag feature. So what I'm going to do here is to my channels, rev limits, I'm actually going to add anti-lag. I'm going to type in anti-A for anti, and we're going to go down here, and we're going to look for the status. It should be able to give us this alt here. We can see that the status is off. It's not actually functioning. Let's go ahead. and. So what we're going to do is we're going to come up and meet the conditions, and we're going to see when this goes on, and we're going to pay attention to what it does uh, to our ignition timing here, and uh, we're going to see the effects of the anti-lag. Now again, we're at 22 PSI boost, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring my actual boost down here lower, so I'm going to bring it down to maybe like 5 or 6 pounds of boost, and I'm going to go ahead and start my engine up. I'm going to bring it up above that engine RPM. Now it should be noted here, I'm at 100% throttle, so I'm going to meet my throttle threshold. I have that at 75, but I have to be above 6,500. So I'm going to bring it up here, and I'm going to bring it up to... 68. And we can see right off the bat here, as soon as I go above that 65, uh, 100 RPM threshold, we're at 100% throttle and we're below, our vehicle speed's below 2 miles an hour. So we have to be below 2, above 65, above 75% throttle, and below 10 PSI. It's going to kick in and it's going to have the ignition timing vary anywhere between uh, 10 to negative 10, deg 10 degrees positive or negative 10 degrees because of 20 degree window we're telling it here. And we can see that our ignition timing here is at negative 5, negative 